Yo, Siri, I don't understand. How did you enter that trade? How are you able to understand that this this trade was going to fall? This this setup was going to be a, a short. How did you know that there was going to be a long? How did you know that? The, how did you know? How did you know? How did you know? How did you know? Well, I'm going to tell you how I know. All right. Give me a second to explain. Okay. But anyways, what's going on, family? We, today, we're going to be talking about the smart money reversal and uh, how this uh, can help you and elevate your trading. Um, obviously. This is a thousand dollars worth of game, million dollars worth of game. If you want to take this information and use it, you're more than welcome to. And if you're just going to be on the sideline, just watching videos and absorbing content without execution, shame on you. All right. So today we're going to be talking about smart money reversal. And of course, it's by me. And what is the smart money reversal exactly? So the smart money reversal is the origin to a reversal. Not to a move or a market maker model, but it's the origin to a reversal. Okay. Um, smart money reversals are high probability above previous highs and lows. All right. So, if, meaning that if price is going above a previous day's high, previous week high, monthly week high, and the bias or the narrative is that, you know, price is supposed to see lower prices, let's say we're in premium. And, you know, you have somewhat of an idea that price is going to go to discount. Well, it, it is your job to anticipate a smart money reversal. If that bias that you have built is opposite. So, for example, like like the same scenario that we're talking about right now. If price is in premium and then I'm like, all right, I'm waiting for this high to be taken. But I'm expecting lower prices because there may be an imbalance on the daily time frame. There may be uh, some liqu a liquidity pool on the daily time frame that resides in discount. And, um, you know, you're expecting a deep retracement. You know, a smart money reversal is what you would expect above a previous day's high, a previous day's week, a previous session's high. You know, all those type of things. You know what I mean? And then vice versa, if it's for a long setup. If it's for a long setup, you're looking at lows. All right. Um, and let's just be let's just be very clear on what this is, all right? The reversal is just an idea. It needs to be confirmed with smaller time frame structure. Understand that. The reversal is just an idea. It needs to be confirmed with smaller time frame structure. So, I'm going to say this right now. Just because smart money reversals are high probability above previous highs and lows does not mean that every time I see a high or a low taken. That means I just enter and go the other way. Now, that would be a contrarian type of trading style. If that's not a bad style, but I think that it takes a lot more, um, I'd say, risk involved if you were to just do that. But this is why we wait for certain confirmations on the smaller time frame. And then we proceed to go ahead with the, with the trade. We, 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 with these confirmations... Let's say you you build an idea for yourself. Let's say you may have a different rule. But the thing is, for me, there's certain rules that I have on the smaller time frames that need to happen before I say, okay, this is a short. Or, okay, this is a long. Okay, I'm going to enter here. A couple things need to happen before I get to that point. A lot of people just want to, oh, I see, the, I see the original consolidation. I'm above a high. We just took out this high. I'm a short. That's not how it works. It's not that simple. If it was that simple, we'd all be rich. It's not that simple. Um, so this is not a complete idea to execute trades, but a sound logic that helps anticipate the next move based on the data presented. So if the data says short, okay, if the data tells you the market structure shift has occurred, the shift of market structure has occurred, um, you know what I'm saying? The change of the state of delivery has occurred. Then you go ahead and execute. You don't do it before, you do it after. So first, you got to get the confirmations and then you enter. And I know that maybe sounds outplayed and outdated. Everybody's like, oh, you got to wait for the confirmations. You got to wait for the confirmations. You got to wait for your, your bias to be confirmed. Well, as cliche as it may sound, it's the truth. You need rules and you need things in place, certain systems that allow you to understand when a, prop, a, high, a, a trade is in high probability or low probability. Okay, and it will be with one of these. This is a way to find out. You know what I mean? Oh, what's going on here? 
We're not going to discuss that yet. We're going to go on to the next slide because I think I put those at the end. I'm sorry. You know, this is what it is. It's doing this pretty fast, I think. So this is one of the ways that I like to um, trade the smart money reversal. And I'm going to come up with a bunch of plethora of examples of, of, you know, different ways that you could see the smart money reversal. Of course, just me looking at this, there's millions of examples just in this. But in this one specifically, we're going to be focused on reclaimed order blocks. And uh, I'm going to say this as I always do. Shout out to Kish. Shout out to ICT. Without those two guys, I probably wouldn't be here. And uh, ICT deserves all the recognition in the world. Um, he's an outstanding individual. Same with Kish. Um, I respect both of those guys and uh, love them to death. All right. So listen to this. This um, idea was really um, given to me or really instilled into me by Kish. Okay. Obviously, uh, the reclaimed order blocks is, is uh, ICT's idea. Um, it's his concept. He coined that. Um, but as far as the Zoom model is is what more more likely what Kish coined, and uh, it, it kind of intertwines. But I don't I don't I don't care who it's from or you know who coined it or whatever. But it's just important the material to understand this. Okay, so here is a smart money reversal. This is what the fractal will look like. This is what the candlesticks will look like. This is the pattern. Okay, but obviously patterns aren't everything because if patterns were everything, we'd all be rich. Okay, but as far as executions, let's just say that in all these examples, you had all the right things outside of the pattern. You had uh, imbalance below uh, or above, you know, um, in the opposite end in premium or discount. And, uh, you know, price came to a key level. And this is the fractal that you saw. Let's just say that you had all those things in place. You had also the volatility. Uh, let's say you had the injection of volatility at the right time. You see this set up exactly at 10 o'clock. There's news at 930, 30 minutes after. Boom, this goes crazy. And this is what you see. You know, let's just say all the things were correct for you to enter. OK, so it's not just a pattern. Realize, realize I just had, I had to make up a scenario, a high probability scenario where everything's in sync, everything's in line, okay? Um, it's the right time of day, it's the right day. Um, you know, when you're looking to do this at the, the, the high of the session, you know, you expect this to be the high of the session, the low of the session, or the high of a day, the low of the day. You know, and this is the fractal that you see at the right time. Again, I'm going to say it again. All these other things have to be in place. It's not just the pattern, but... Let's just say you have a way of understanding or creating a concise way of understanding when the probability is in your favor. Then you would go on to this. And this is the plethora of examples that you would otherwise use when you know that the probability is in your favor. OK, so let's get past that. All right. Um, so if you just trade this alone, I'm going to say once again, for those who didn't understand. You are asking for it. You are asking for your stops to be taken every single day. So. Again, everything else has to be correct before you come over here and say, oh, this didn't work. Oh, of course. It's not even going to work every time, even when the stuff is in your favor. Okay? That's another one. Let me just state that and make that clear because a lot of you guys are very entitled to having everything go your way. Okay? So, this right here is recognized as the Zoom model by Kish. And uh, basically, a couple things have to happen here. Um, so the way Kish explains it, this is a um, real low. This right here is the real low. So we refer to any PD arrays left behind in this leg. Why? Because the leg that comes after is simply a manipulation and is a stop hunt on this leg. So if this is manipulation, let's focus on the real price action. Okay. Let's focus on this because this is not manipulation. This is actually the accumulation period. Hint, hint. And then this is the stop hunt, the manipulation. Then this is the short term high here. It gets taken. Now, between this low to this high, we create a dealing range. All right. But the way this specific one is, um, you know, because I could explain every single detail of this and I will create 10 examples here, even more. But this right here is the real price action because this is the real low. This is just the manipulation. 
to stop out those here. And that's why it goes back in that favor. So, <clears throat> um, here, this is the open, order block open. Notice how when we come here in the manipulation phase, we come here and then we have this large candle, up candle, and it closes above the opening price of this order block right here. Okay. Then we have this immediate rebalance on the next candle. So how do you how do you anticipate this or how do you enter or how do you know that you're correct? Or let's just say what's the confirmation here? Okay. So there's a couple confirmations, but for this specific example, um, I would consider the reclaimed order block or the zoom model entry a little more um well, I wouldn't say the zoom model entry because the zoom model is actually an understanding, but as far as the reclaimed order block um, all you really have to do is simply wait for the stop hunt. So the stop hunt occurs here, and you see the real low here, the order block left behind. So you refer to this order block here. And this is the order block open, okay? Once we have a candle that closes above that opening price, and preferably closes above the actual high of that candle, right? And actually confirms the order block. Then the next candle, you'll wait for this candle to close, right? And then the next candle that opens, you watch for this immediate rebalance into the opening price of that reclaimed order block. Anywhere in the range of that wick from the opening price to the high, that right there would be your concern, and you could enter there. Anywhere anywhere inside of this wick right here is correct. You would be considered a A-plus executor there, okay? Um, so don't, you know, if you want to demand for extreme pre uh, precision, that's good. But with this move, this move tends to be very fast, and uh, you got to catch it on time. So for me, what I simply do is once I see this order block uh, form, I just stay on my screen, and I manually execute once I see this uh, bearish candle, this uh, candle open, and then it's bearish, I'll just enter. I'll enter longs there, and I'll go doop, doop. That's it. And then... When the candle closes, you have this. And what time frames is this? Does this work on? This prefer preferably works on any time frame. It really, um, it's just making sure that there is an understanding before you enter. You know, there's an understanding why should price go lower. You know, to seek fair value. Um, and then if this fractal shows up, I've seen this fractal a bunch of times. And then if I entered here, my stop loss would be here. But it's not here before this stop hunt. Okay. This trade gets executed after the stop hunt. Therefore, then my stop loss comes here because this is the real low. If this is really, truly bullish, price shouldn't come below this order block here. Okay? And that's just my understanding. Okay? And then boom. You put your stop loss here. Enter there. Life is good. Let's move on to the next. And then obviously, we have the same fractal appear. Right. Look. So what's what 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 once was the uh, order block open or the reclaimed order block here, now is something else. And this is why I tell you guys, everything is subjective to based off what you are comfortable with. You know, you could possibly be comfortable with a dealing range, right? Because it gives you extra confirmation. What's the extra confirmation, Siri? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm gonna show you right now. This is the same fractal that you saw earlier. I'm gonna go back. You see that? It's the same exact thing. But now, there's an extra added part to it, okay? So, the whole idea is that this is a dealing range. A dealing range is a range that raised both sides of liquidity. So, first we rated sell-side liquidity, and then we rated buy-side liquidity. And then, what you simply do is take a fib from this low here uh, to this high, because I think this high is a little higher. You see, this is what happens when, you're in a, when you do things uh, rushed. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to that detail, and now it's kind of pissing me off, but it's okay. So this low to this high right here, and then what you're going to do is outline the 50% and try to see if there's any PD raise at the 50% that can match uh, with the 50% as confluence. So in this case, uh, the 50% would be um, here, around this area here, and here we have a gap, all right? So price should have opened right at this close right here, but instead it gapped down and then it went up, okay? That right there is the reason for this and it's at equilibrium. And then there's also a fair value gap. So when you have these instances right here, uh, you know, 
you would normally want the fair value gap to act as a support and then all these other little things these little intricacies below the fair value gap would be reason for price to wig down there and offer um you know price there and it pretty much squeezes anybody who has tight stops and uh you know on these type of plays um what i'm expecting is for these candles to close inside this fair value gap and the wicks to just offer that um that price um you know this is all broker related you know depending on what broker you have they might not even come down there that's why it's always safe to go into the fair value gap here that is literally right almost at uh equilibrium you know so that's very simple so you just put your 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 fit from this low to this high and then 50 percent you have a fair value gap volume and balance wherever wherever you feel comfortable entering that's where you enter but it's it's the idea that this range is the real range and they were accumulating orders here and then price took those orders here those who entered early and then ran it their way you know what i mean and um again making sure that this is at the right time of the day this is happening when um you know the new after news like you know five minutes after news you say this fractal uh right day all these things all these things have to be in place okay and um yeah so for me i would put my stop loss right here okay because now i'm basing it this right here is based off this dealing range okay so now if this is a dealing range price can consider uh to actually come below this wick right here and then come right back to this order block you know what i mean obviously i don't want it to do that and really in reality it wouldn't be coming down to this order block in my opinion it would be referring to this one you know um now if it goes below this right here this is where it's considered wrong but if you wanted to be more passive with your stop loss and you wanted to allow price to develop and uh formulate its range you know inside the range and things like that um, I'd put the stop loss here if you want to be safe. Um, this is more uh, risk, um, you know, risk adverse, meaning that um, I'm going ahead and trying to add more risk on, uh, like, I, well, increase my position with the same type of risk. That's the whole reason why I would put my stop loss here if I wanted to load uh, heavy positions and, um, you know, get more RR in return. Some people trade that way. Me, personally, if my stop loss was here or here, I would increase my uh, volume because it's the range between these lows is fairly insignificant. OK, unless you're on a daily time frame where this is like 50 pips. But then again, still insignificant according to the daily time frame. OK, so we're on to the next one. OK, so next we have a rejection block. Uh, let me explain this one. This one, um, this is why you have to pay a lot of attention to this and you have to understand um you know when is price likely to do this okay so for rule of thumb this fractal right here is kind of the same thing right we have order block manipulation dealing range you know we take out the short-term high so now we're confirming that's extra confirmation of the bias there's small fair value gap here bpr here um but what makes this go to the rejection block instead of just going into this fair value gap here or here and then just skyrocketing well from my personal experience um, Any time that the reclaimed order block, right, in the uh, in this fractal, if there is a long wick to that order block, okay, price will normally try to come back and try to mitigate the consequent encouragement of this wick right here. Okay, this is a reclaimed order block. It could be used as a reclaimed order block. So, like for argument's sake, if like somebody wanted to enter at the opening price of this, they can. But because there is this wick, they would have to, you know, um, put their stop loss below this wick here. And I would even be, uh, you know, I would recommend that you put it down here because it could embody this entire wick and just wick and then go all the way back up. Um, but normally, 50% uh, is kind of, you know, the consequent encouragement is a rule of thumb here. So anytime you see an order block with a large wick above it or below it, expect the 50% of that wick to be mitigated or at least the uh, opening price or closing price okay so that's very important for you guys to understand okay um so here we have this rejection block large wick what do we expect for price to come down there and this is what happens you know 50 percent gets hit here and then you enter long stop losses are here and tps are anything above this here okay 
And uh, just so you guys can understand what an efficient range is and what an inefficient range is, okay? So normally, um, I use this rule of thumb, and this is coming out of, all these things are coming out of my personal model and how I trade and how I see the market, my perspective. Um, if I see a leg, okay, if I see a leg that's efficient, and what makes a leg efficient? You know, you know so I think sometimes all these words get thrown around uh, the community, and a lot of people don't understand. Um, they actually don't understand what these things mean. And, uh, you know, it's okay uh, sometimes to not even know. You know what I mean? But um, when you gain experience and you've been doing this for a while, you'll know when, when a range is efficient, uh, when a range is inefficient, okay? So for this specific example, we here have a efficient range, okay? So what does that mean? Okay, so I'm starting to see that there is a leg, right? This leg expands higher, leaves an imbalance behind, price comes back down, fills that entire imbalance or that void, and then comes down and then rebalances it and then goes back the other way. And then we leave another imbalance behind, then we rebalance this. So to me, every time that I see a, a price leg where there has been rebalancing done, that to me is efficient. Um, does that mean that the entire trading range is efficiently traded? No. But in this case, with this specific example, everything is okay. Um, normally, we'll have the, we'll have a case where uh, there's an imbalance left in discount, and prices runs, runs 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 higher. And of course, you know, above that fair value gap, um, there's efficient pricing. Okay, so either that fair value gap at that time is a breakaway gap, or it's used as a measuring gap, or it's um, used as a breakaway gap in the meantime but then price may consider to redeliver to that fair value gap for fair value purposes okay so which is one of the things you have to be mindful of all right so what's the point of me talking about efficient ranges okay so an efficient range so a range that has been efficiently traded like let's let's say we had this range here before um the smart mini reversal came upon so let's say the original consolidation was right here and then this was an efficient leg okay and then let's say that the high was right here above these letters right here, okay? So I'm expecting the fractal to be here. So I already see the reclaimed order block. And then I see price going through the manipulation. So this is the real high. This is the manipulation or the fake high. And then I would want to see some sort of breakdown. And uh, if you're using the reclaimed order block, you're going to want um, price to close below this opening price. And preferably even below this wick. But in my, in my case, I would just want the uh, opening price there. And then we have a displacement away, and then price comes back as like a immediate rebalance. That's a lower sell, and then your stop loss is above here, and then boom, we're going down. Okay. If you want extra confirmation, you want the break of this low for the dealing range, 50%. This range right here will take both sides. Uh, it took buy side, and then it's going to take sell side here, and then boom. Okay. I could already see this happening before, before it happens, and I can anticipate it. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen every time because, again, I need the confirmations in place. And I could have everything correct. I could have everything in place. And I'm still going to be wrong, which is why risk management is important. Um, it's very important, okay? Um, I'm trying to tell you guys, in my personal journey, I struggle with uh, risk management till this day. Um, you know, when doing certain things... Um, and I think everybody does, but I'm getting to that point where, uh, you know, I'm get, I've am getting i been in a point where, or in a stage where I feel sometimes too confident. And so we have the mistake of over leveraging uh, sometimes just because we want to grow accounts fast. And where the case is that it's a small account or a demo account, doesn't matter, that will lead to um, problems in the near future when you're trying to go for these funded accounts and these challenges, okay? So bear in mind that you practice how you play how you practice sorry okay uh so anyways for an efficient range this needs a market structure shift or a shift in market structure so shift to market structure you want this low to be taken okay obviously the highs are rated liquidity levels taken you want this to be took and then there's like a fair value gap left behind 50 percent dealing range boom call it a day and you're good okay 
that's what you want okay but this needs a shift in market structure or for some of those people who call the market structure shifts whatever the case is this needs a shift in market structure okay period um because this is um an efficient range okay this is different all this needs is a change in state and delivery so you notice the difference between these legs right this is efficiently traded this one is inefficiently traded okay this one is leaving large imbalances behind so how is this delivery going to be different well this delivery does not need a market structure shift or a shift in market structure why because this is a lower resistance liquidity run versus this one this still could be a low resistance liquidity run this still could be you know because you have these lows higher lows yeah this still could be a low resistance liquidity run but pay 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 attention to the difference if they wanted to rebalance this whole leg or take this entire leg and reverse on this leg it'd be a lot easier because there's only one sided delivery going upwards so what do i need for this one and this one is very simple all i need is for um up close candles to be rated so like i, I want to if i want to trade this all i need is an order block formation you know what i mean a confirmation of an order block and then anytime price retraces into this order block i go short it's that simple all right but this is a lot different because this has one-sided delivery so price would, would would want to seek this one-sided delivery and offer the other side to officially trade this range so this should be quick and full of speed aggression um and these type of trades tend to um be very quick and uh versus when you're trading against an efficient range i'm not saying that it's going to be slow but it could be slower in fashion due to the fact that it needs a market structure shift um you know you need a couple confirmations in order for price to do this um and go below these lows and things like that um with this one it's more like um hey you know this is a big billboard hey come catch me you know come catch me why don't you come and uh, trade against me this is what that billboard is screaming at me like hey uh trade against me please this needs to be rebalanced we i mean again we don't just enter short if we just see these imbalances large imbalances behind again you need a change in state of delivery and all this simply means is you want to see this candle right here which is a potential bearish order block if you see a bearish candle come below that and confirm this um you would want to again just wait for the retracement into the opening price of this or the wick and then you just short it and then you go below again some of you guys may be like well i think this is wrong i think that this is wrong because can't price just come into the consequent consequent encouragement of this fair value gap and then we'll just go back up wouldn't that just be a retracement absolutely so what does that mean if that's how you are comfortable in this trade setup there you go you just made a filter for yourself you just made a filter for this trade you said well, couldn't it just come back to consequent encouragement and then go above? So what does that mean? If you wanted to trade this and that is what your worry is, why don't you create a filter for it? If price comes to the, the consequent encouragement of this imbalance, right? Make a filter where you, ex you if, if you're going to enter short, you want price to close below that halfway point. If it closes below, then that confirms your bias. That's how simple it is. And if you want to be a knucklehead like me, you know, all you need is this order block to be confirmed and then you're good. Okay. But I personally don't have to wait for it for a closure below the 50%. Okay. If it does it before I get the retracement, then that, that just gives me more reasons to go short. It gives me more confluence and more confidence in the trade setup. But that doesn't mean that I increase risk because of that. It just means that I enter and uh, let the trade run you know um but if you're one of those people who are afraid of the consequent encouragement again i'm gonna say it again so you guys don't miss out because some some of you guys just be skimming through these things um there you go wait for a price to close below the halfway point of this imbalance and then that would confirm your bias for uh shorts okay and then any retracement into um any type of imbalance left behind on the way down is the way that you would enter and execute and uh, i would say 
the order block open also should be your best friend here in this uh, scenario, okay? So now let's go into uh, examples, okay? Um, obviously, this is a um, zoom model. And, uh, you know, this is also all the examples and things that we talked about here, okay? Um, what's funny is, before we even get to this, I think I had more examples here, didn't I? There we go. Yeah, I know. I knew it. All right, my fault. So then there's also this, guys. This is his last one. Um, price took out the sell side liquidity, took out the buy side liquidity, and there is, uh, you could treat this as a breaker. And um, that's a way to, uh, well, this is the, the way I think that most traders know it by and how they trade the smart money reversal. But there's a lot of ways to get in before this happens, okay? You get in here. Um, you could even get in here, but that takes a lot, uh, a lot more skill. Um, but of course, this is what it is. Okay. So, um, the breaker is something I don't really have to go over. So, you know what I mean? So anyways, this is the zoom model. And, um, not only is this a zoom model, this is also the breaker. You know, you could use this order block. I mean, this breaker block right here, use it there. You have this price holding on to that. Um, not only is this that also, I mean, this is a BPR, uh, shift in market structure, then price comes down to the BPR and then we go higher. Uh, this is also a reclaimed order block. Uh, this could also be a freaking rejection block, uh, you know, theory, um, with this candle all the way back here, we have a large wig, 50%. You could use that right there. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. This is also a daily range, uh, you know, low, high, 50% BPR, reclaimed order block, boom. Okay, like, this is crazy. It's that simple, all right? And then notice how um, this is taken in June 24, 2022. Just to show you guys, this high does not uh, this high does not house liquidity. So, like, you see how I understand this? Like a long time before, uh, I showed you guys on the previous video of the market maker. If you guys been watching the videos in order, um, you see this high does not house liquidity. So I'm looking for the low resistance liquidity runs. You know, equal highs. Uh, you know, liquidity rests here. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's no um, higher high here. This is all failure swings and prices keeps going lower. So, and there's a small imbalance there, you know, this is, this is what I, this is what I've been doing for a while now. So it's not a coincidence that you're seeing work, uh, from possibly eight months ago, um, still being used today and explained today. So again, I've, I've said it before, all these things that I use and talk about, um, are things that I personally use. And it's not something that I like, Oh, you know, I know this information, so let me just teach it. No, it's literally things I use. And, uh, of course, you're not going to pull every single tool out of the toolbox to trade every single setup. That's not the case. But you do want to um, utilize uh, certain tools at certain times um, because it, it just it just helps you understand where the market is. You know, it just helps your anticipatory skills. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I say these things are just all concepts, all right? Um, any system that you go with or trade with, the only real thing it should really do is make you feel comfortable while risking. Let me say that again. A model or any type of entry, is a pattern, anything, the only reason people really use it is because it makes them comfortable at risking. Because if you didn't have that pattern, you wouldn't be comfortable. You wouldn't be comfortable trying to trade and open a trade and, you know, put some risk on, okay? So, all these concepts are simply ways that I like to view the marketplace. And it helps me form an edge. Because that's exactly what it is, all right? And then, obviously, this is the picture that you guys saw earlier. Um, I mean, these are things that I've said before, uh, <laughs> you know. This is uh, order blocks at equilibrium. You could find that video in my channel um, and how we use sessions and use the equilibrium as important price points, the high and the low. Uh, obviously you see here, this is a reclaimed order block price. Obviously this is the real low price takes out this. This is all manipulation. 
and then once we get a closure above this and then we also have a bpr here um this just for me is a market structure shift uh price comes back down into that opening price and look how we respect it here after the stop hunt has occurred not before so otherwise you know I wouldn't enter this trade if there was no stop hunt. So there's a stop hunt below this low. That's all I'm asking for. It happens here. Then we come right back above it. And then look at this. Look how price is respecting that line. All right. We're closing above this BPR here. Uh, I mean, this fair value gap. Then once we leave it, it becomes a BPR. And then when we come back down to it, it just acts like a brick wall. Okay. And confluence added with this opening price here. Blue line, blue line. Boom. And then you see everything after that forms after becomes a brick wall for prices just to continue higher. Uh, order blocks below a high, fair value gap, boom, go along. So, again, these things are not random. Um, you know, you could use this to your advantage, uh, but these are things that uh, we've been using um, over there at uh, the currency merchant group, okay? The currency uh merchant group uh 1v1 pilot uh group um so yeah guys that's pretty much it um i pretty much don't have nothing else to talk about uh sorry this one took a little longer to release i mean i've i've been pretty consistent i can say uh, and i continue to plan i plan on continuing this consistency um you know to keep you know you know, informing you guys with education, knowledge, knowledge is power, all, you know, so I'm going to help you guys out and I'm going to continue to post this content because I want to grow this community. You guys think it's possible for us to hit 50,000 subscribers this year? Um, you know, leave a, leave a, leave a comment. And, and if you watch through this entire video, I know you're a real one. And I want you to leave a comment on how you think it's possible for us to achieve 50 thousand subscribers this year um i think it's definitely possible and anything that i believe is possible is um already done right we already hit fifty thousand, family we already hit that all right and uh, now it's just all about executing and making sure that we become the person that gets to that fifty thousand. all right um and um again i'm always on telegram um all that stuff, you know, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff is in the bio. Um, I don't use my Instagram as much as the other ones, uh, for those who are wondering. But, um, you know, you guys can go ahead and message me on my Telegram. That's the most easiest and the most consistent way of reaching me. Um, and I'm going to help you guys out. Any questions you guys have, I'm going to help you guys out, all right? Um I want to thank you guys all for uh, embarking with me in this journey and uh, walking this journey with me. And, uh, of course, expect more videos. I, um, I'm going to make a, um, a uh, I plan on making a Racks to Riches series where I'm actually showing my face, you know, um, and I'm talking about my process and uh, where I'm at right now in my current stage. And I want to be very transparent with you guys on where I'm at in my stage. And I know it doesn't matter, but it's just um, the only reason I really want to do it is so you guys can see, you know, for myself, I want to see my, you know, previous days where the days where I wasn't as consistent as I want to be. Um, and I'm still learning and building rules around my model. But, um, you know, versus when. In the future, I look back and I say, wow, all that work paid off. All that time spent after work, um, coming home late and still getting on the charts late just so I can, you know, learn and, and, and observe what I've been doing wrong and, and right. And, you know, this is the journey. You know what I mean? Um, this is, you know, we're all trying to get out of this rat race. Um, but, yeah, guys, I don't want to hold you guys too long. Um, we're about to hit that 40 minute mark um, in just about a second. So, um, again, I want to appreciate you guys for always tuning in and uh, shout out to my real ones out there that are always coming out and uh, showing love, support. And, uh, and if any guys, if any of you guys were to start a channel and uh, are starting to create content, um, I would be more than happy to share everybody what's going on with your personal journey. So let's help each other grow. Let's help each other evolve into these uh, profitable beings. And uh, I wish you guys nothing but the best. Um, it's been your boy. And as always, peace. I'm out. All right. Take care.